الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد إخلاص أو سنسيرتي في الإسلام هو شيء that is incredibly important for the believer in every and single affair and especially it is important during this holy month of Ramadan to have a pure intention purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fasting purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving sadaqah purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing all of your deeds all of your ta'at all of your obedience it's to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's for his sake Subhana, to please him, Tabaraka wa ta'ala. And we're going to begin a series of sittings regarding manners and, and things that we can observe and practice during this holy month of Ramadan, bi'idnillah. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts blessings in it and makes it a benefit for all of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rectify our condition and affairs and the affairs of the Muslims in general. So ikhlas, sincerity in intention, that it is making, ikhlas is to make one's intention to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal in every way. So it is sincerely directing one's intention, one's niyyah to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what makes it ibadah that's what makes it a type of worship is that when someone intends to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that action then that is an act of worship as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned that ibadah or worship it is kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu. That it is everything which Allah loves and is pleased with from those actions which are apparent and those things which are concealed. Meaning those things that are contained in the heart. For example, tawakkul and tawassal. We can't tell how much tawakkul a person has, how much strict reliance a person has upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by looking at them. Because that is a matter of the heart. Or to whistle when they supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or try to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their different types of, uh, of worship. Then some of this can be open and some of this can be inside of the heart. And when a person, they have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this, generally you're going to see that someone fears Allah this is going to be something, a matter of their heart. How their heart is affected. But we're not going to be able to make these judgments by looking on their, based on their outward appearance, mostly. There may be some signs of taqwa. But real taqwa, it's going to be what's contained in their heart. And so, getting back to the point of ikhlas, that it is having sincerity to come closer to Allah, the Almighty. And the scholars, they have different statements regarding this concept of ikhlas or sincerity. Some of them, they say, that it is to make one's intention solely to Allah the Almighty alone in the various ways of obedience. And some of them, they say, that ikhlas or sincerity, it is forgetting and abstaining from looking at the creation and instead pondering consistently the signs of the Creator. That it is doing things solely for the Creator of the heavens and earth, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, and pondering his creation in order to be obedient to him and leaving off pondering at the creation. So this is sincerity. So this is another statement that the scholars, uh, another way in which they define sincerity. 
is that it is leaving and forgetting the creation. So that means a person would not look to what other people think in this creation. A person would be firmly upon being sincere to their Lord, always thinking about what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want from me? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is Allah accepting this deed? This is what one uh, definition that the scholars have uh, defined the concept of ikhlas or sincerity. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to have sincerity. In the Quran, in many verses in the Quran, but one that you and I are very familiar with in Surah Al Bayna, where Allah Taala says, "Wama wama umiru illa li Allah mukhlisin lahudin hunafa." Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "Be kitabi al kareem," and that they were not commanded except to worship Allah, li yabulullah, li yabulullah. Mukhlisin, and they were not commanded except to worship Allah sincerely, with sincerity, mukhlis. You know, not sharing with anyone in this worship. Mukhlisin lahuddin hunafa, and for Allah is pure monotheism. That right there sums it up in many respects. That, as Sheikh Muhammad illustrated, that Hanifia, Ilm Rahimakallah, in the Hanifia. أن الحنيفية ملة الإبراهيم إن تعبد الله مخلصين له دين. That Hanifia, it is the deen of religion. Uh, it is the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Then he defined what it means. إن تعبد الله and it is to worship Allah مخلصين له دين. And it is to worship Allah alone, without any partners. And for him is the religion كله. That the whole religion is for Allah subhanahu wa taala. That is what sincerity, that's what ikhlas is. And that's what the meaning of that, that uh, hanafiyah is in the ayah. It's the religion of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam. And that it is worshipping, it is based upon the worship and directing all worship only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity. Now it's easy for us all as Muslims to accept that. But unfortunately, many of us or some of us go astray even with that, that definition. We accept that definition. But our practices contradict that. For example, when we pray, we pray to Allah and we pray with, uh, we maybe we allow showing off to come in our worship. So that is the minor shirk. That's a minor way in which we go against that sincerity in which we're trying to attain. It's by sharing in our ibadah, which is the salat, by showing off to make it, perfecting our salat for other people, then this will uh, take away, this will nullify that act of worship, that salat. Or, for example, the person who is delivering knowledge, that maybe they are doing it to gain praise of the people. So then that will nullify that action of doing dawah, or that action of giving lessons, or that action of teaching, or that action of teaching the people the Qur'an. That will nullify that action. But if it is solely for the sake of the people, then it not only nullifies that, it can be the sh it can get into the sh major shirk, which totally uh, can nullify a person's Islam, take them out of the fold of Islam. So this is why ikhlas is so serious. This is why the Salaf al-Sari, Ridwan Allah that they were so meticulous and so careful about the concept of ikhlas, of being sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their acts of worship. And in a hadith, the hadith of Abi Umama, رضي الله تعالى عنه قال جاء رجل إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال أرأيت رجلا غزا يلتمس الأجر وذكر ما له فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا شيء له فعادها ثلاثا مرارا ويقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا شيء له ثم قال إن الله لا يقبل من العمل إلا ما كان له خالص وابتغى به وجهه رواه نسائي In this sound hadith, this authentic hadith 
of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that was narrated by Abi Umama, Abi Umama, Abi um, Umama radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that a man came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Have you, ha, uh, what do you think about the man who fights, you know, he, he makes ghazwa, he makes, uh, you know, he participates in a ghazwa, like jihad fi sibilillah, and he is seeking uh, financial, um, financial benefits and He's also doing it, uh, making dhikr, you know, doing it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What, what's for him? What's in his case? The Prophet sallallahu responded by saying that there's nothing for him. Then the man repeated it three times. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, there isn't anything for him. Then he said, Verily, Allah does not accept a deed unless it is strictly, sincerely for him seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's face, meaning seeking the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, this shows us that we have to be sincere. And that this is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is the minhaj or the methodology of the Salaf al-Sari. Radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'een. That their path and methodology was based upon sincerity to Allah. And that that is one of the ways in which we have our deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's many, many ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu which illustrate this. And many ayat from the Qur'an to show us that when we try to share in our worship with Allah, uh, our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we, we give a, per, a, a portion of it to the dunya, a portion of it to the shaitan, a portion of it to the people. That that is where all the evil comes. All evil lies in that. But when it's sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then all khair comes from that. And what we also learn, as the scholars mention, that it is so difficult to have a correct intention. That one of the Sarahim, one of the righteous said that he used to say to himself, that when he seeks to be sincere, that you, that you you your your reward or your outcome will be sincerity. So in order to obtain sincerity, a person must try to break down break down their desires. And that is the sabil, that is the way in order to obtain a pure intention. And that is so profound. It is, it's, it's something that we have to reflect upon, that we have to ponder. That if you want to purify your intention, you have to break down your nafs. You have to break down your desires. You have to remove yourself from your shahwat from your desires. And what better way to do that than fasting? Fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And breaking down that intention, or breaking down those desires, because the more through your desires, it will come the facade of your intention. It will come the wickedness or the tainting of your intention. That when a person begins to think about, well, hey, what will I gain from this in financial benefit? Or hey, what will I gain from, you know, will women be pleased with me and will I will I be able to gain another wife? Or uh, will the women be uh, attracted to me? Or hey, will I gain some financial benefit from this? 
or what, what will I gain out of the dunya? The more we reflect on those things in whatever we do, that will destroy our intention. Those, that is the biggest destroy of your intention. So that's why a part of obtaining this ikhlas, as the Salaf illustrated for us, is breaking down the nafs, is removing and breaking down your intention. Because it is so difficult for us. Abu Ayyub mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, one of the Salaf, he said, تخليص النيات على العمال أشد عليهم من جميع الأعمال. He said that purifying the intentions for the people who do righteous deeds is more severe upon them than all of their deeds. So it's easy to make Hajj and Umrah. Uh, and umrah. But it's much more difficult to have your intention pure when you're making those hajj, when you're making hajj, or you're making pure, uh, umrah. Or it's easy to make, to fast, as this, for us, with Ilal 2012, this is the first day of Ramadan, 1433 Hijri. This is the first day of Ramadan for us here in, 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 uh, in, in Saudi Arabia, 2012. It's easy for us, bi ta'ala, to give up the drinking and the eating. And to give up having the relations and maybe looking at the, uh, imp- the, the haram and engaging in the haram. It's easy for those 12 to 16, to some places possibly 19 hours of fasting. That, that's difficult. That requires ijtihad. That's difficult. It does require sacrifice. But what is more severe than that is the intention during that time. Is remembering that you're doing it for Allah. And striving to please uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a shed min al a'mal. That's more severe than doing the actual act of fasting. Those actual uh, refraining from eating and drinking and doing those things. But actually do, being sincere and doing righteous deeds, attending Islamic lectures. And one of the best things to be doing is reading the Qur'an. Reading the Qur'an and sacrificing your time. To lock yourself in a room alone, closing the door and reading the Qur'an, reading the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that, that is, no one can see you. Your reward is with Allah. And that takes sincere, sincerity and sacrifice. Because our intention, our 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 our, uh, our nafs, our our soul, or our uh, our desires, they love or they are fed by praise of the people and by gaining position. This person is now the 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 manager in his position, or this person is now the imam of his masjid, or this person is now a talib al ilm in his community, and this woman, she now, she's memorized so much, and she's teaching the children, and she's teaching the people Qur'an, she's a sheikha, he's a sheikh, this one is this, so people, our desires, we love position, we love to be praised, and we love that to be out in the open, however, and our desires are also inclined to being lazy. And we're also, we love the shahwat, the desires. This is what our, our nafs is inclined to. And that's why it requires breaking it down. Breaking it down and removing those desires to try to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And having sincerity for our Lord subhanahu But that is not easy. So sincerity requires to break down the nafs to begin to remove and break down your desire for the dunya. To break down down your desire to gain wealth. 
doesn't mean you, you don't desire to make wealth and take care of your family and to maybe you want to put away something for, for your family in the future. You maybe It requires wealth generally even to go seek the knowledge. If you want to go to another uh, a place or you, you want to give charity, you, you need something to give for that. So we're not saying wealth is haram or wealth is is unpraiseworthy if it's used for khayr. But the thing is to make that your your main goal, to make that what you're striving for. But if you sacrifice much more of your time to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this will help you attain ikhlas sincerity. By gaining, spending more of your time desiring righteousness and desiring the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing righteous deeds will bring you closer to Allah and will help you attain sincerity. And that's what it's all about. So we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our all of our deeds, all of our righteous deeds. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala help us to have sincerity in all of our deeds. Ikhlas lillah. And to remove from ourselves the those things which will take a... that will... Uh, lead us to hypocrisy and lead us to showing off and lead us to make to nul, have our deeds nullified. May Allah accept this from us as our good deeds and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to go forward and bless the Muslims everywhere. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam until our next sitting during this holy month and we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to bless our sittings to be beneficial. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad.